So welcome back again. So now what we're going to do is we've got a lot of neat skills that we've developed with Swift. Uh, we want to actually use them in an application. So the application we're going to do is we're going to build up a tic-tac-toe model object. So we're not worried about the UI. So we're just, just worried about like, you know, if somebody clicks here, um, you know, what X or O do we put there? Uh, does that win the game? So the model object behind it. So we do care about the model object, but it's easy to explain things just by showing what the UI is going to look like later. So we're going to build a tic-tac-toe game that is two human players, so there's no computer involved. Uh, so if it's X's turn, you know, he'll click, uh, then he'll hand the phone to another person, uh, and then they'll click for O. And then what you're responsible for this time is, like, keeping track of the board, uh, you know, knowing whose turn it is. And then, of course, if somebody wins, um, you know, acknowledging that that's the state of the game, somebody has won. And if, you know, people try to keep clicking after that, you don't, you don't do anything, right? And then, of course, new game would start things fresh. So you, the responsibility this time is just for, for making a game, the model object that's going to back it up. What we're going to do to actually implement that is we're going to uh, use a playground again. And you should have in the follow alongs area a tic-tac-toe playground. So you can go and open that up. So when you open it up, you can see there's really not much here. Uh, we're going to be creating a new class called Tic-Tac-Toe uh, Game, I guess I should say. And then once we uh, you know, create that class and implement it, we're going to be testing it with all these functions down here. So you can see that there's a, a way to print it uh, using a description. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Uh, there's a way to press a square. So if you tell it like what square just got pressed. Uh, if you look at these values, you can see that they're passing in like one, three, two, six, what do these numbers mean? Let's go talk about that really quick. Uh, and so what these numbers mean is we've decided to model this kind of under the hood as a one-dimensional array. And that just makes our lives a little easier instead of having to deal with a two-dimensional array. Two-dimensional array is not hard, it's just kind of extra syntax. So the way I think about this board is just with the numbers zero, uh, one, two across the top, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so this is what it means if you pressed uh, a certain number uh, that would like put an X or an O in that location. So if we take a look at this, we can see that pressing zero would put it in the upper left, and that put an X there, and then it put an O right in the middle, and then an X uh, right below, and then an O on the two, and then an X on the six. You can see that that would make uh, an X win. So this first little sample here is going to be an X win. The second chunk is going to be an O win. You can see instead of starting from scratch, we actually started from some board. So we started with X's in the top, and then nobody in the middle, and an O in the bottom. Um, and so if X goes in position 8, and then O goes in 4, that would be an O win. And then this last one just shows a tie game. So just to kind of make sure we can get through all the different situations. So what we're going to do in this video is we're just going to kind of start the, the planning process of how we're going to model this thing, and what we're going to use to store the data. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make an enum uh, to track what each mark is, like X or O or nothing there. And I'm just going to call it mark type. Since I'm going to be doing a lot with uh, displaying like what this board looks like, so you can see these descriptions in here, I'm going to actually choose to back my mark type enum uh, with a string. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make a case for none. Uh, and I'm going to say that none is equal to, we'll just put a little hyphen for none. Uh, X, uh, which is of course just a capital letter X, uh, and then O, and so I'll just use a capital letter O. So that's my mark type enum, which is going to be useful. I'm also going to make an enum to keep track of what the game state is. So the game state I'm going to also back with a string. If you remember from the demo, it like was printing out some strings. Uh, but there are only so many cases for the, uh, the game state. It could be X's turn. Uh, which I'll back with a string that just says X's turn. And then you could also have a case where O is the winner, so, or O's up, so we'll just say O's turn. Uh, a case where X is the winner, uh, a case where O is the winner, uh, or a case where there was no winner, it was a tie, you filled all the boards. That's also called a cat, uh, but I chose to just call it tie in here. So these are the two basic enums uh, that I've decided to use to kind of represent this board. And then what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create a uh, array of mark types to represent the board. So I'm just going to call that my game board. And my game board is a, it's an array of type mark type. Uh, so that's the variable that's going to track my board. 
And then I'm also going to have another variable called game state, uh, which is of type game state, uh, which will get a little confusing when I'm code completing whether I want the uppercase G or the lowercase G. Uh, if you were actually typing these things, you can see that there's an error uh, right now, and that's because you've said that these things are non-nil, non uh, but you haven't actually made a constructor for them yet. In our previous example with like a bank account, we had a constructor which received parameters, but for a tic-tac-toe board, it kind of makes the most sense just to receive nothing. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to initialize my game board. There's a couple of different ways that you can make initializers. Uh, what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to use this initializer that lets me have a repeated value. And so what I want to do here is I want to say, hey, array of type mark type create an array for me with nine values uh, that are dot none. Note that I could have said mark type dot none, but it actually worked out fine here just to say none. And then the game state uh, is going to be equal to game state dot x turn. So that's going to be the default x turn there. You can see that just for giggles, sometimes I choose to include uh, the name of the enum and sometimes I don't. It's just because you have the choice. And I think it's kind of neat that you have the choice so you can show it or not show it if you want. And then to be honest, that's enough to where you could actually uncomment, you know, the first line on this, uh, and it would actually create a game object for you. You can see that what Swift does for you by default, which is not all that helpful, uh, is it just prints out the objects that are in here. So it prints out an enum, uh, an array of enums. There's nine enum values on there, which is really not all that useful. So what we're going to do next time is we're going to uh, make a way to actually make the printing of it look a lot better. All right, so we're chipping along. We've kind of got a plan for what our backing structure is, but we haven't actually done much with it. Come back next time, and we'll print this thing a little cleaner.